mean, that's really my one regret with WWE. Like, I wouldn't really change anything else except I wish I just, like, I wish I just wouldn't have turned on him. I wish I wouldn't have done that. Rewind, recap, relive. For over 50 episodes, the revolutionary force in wrestling interviews. What was the feeling like with you guys when you found out that you had to actually turn on him? It just happened in such a weird way. It was like, you know, we didn't know. We didn't really know what was going to happen. We couldn't get any solid answers on it. So it was like. Oh, really? The okay. Talking Smack segment, right, where, where they announced that I'm going to go to Raw. So that was like the first time we kind of figured out that, all right, well, maybe they're splitting us up. But then for like the next two weeks, we're both doing stuff on each other's brands, right? We do like. Right. We do the El Gran Gordo thing because uh, we're, we're still doing the – like the trial hasn't happened yet, right? The time that we split, the trial still hasn't happened. So it's like, you know, the day that I actually – that pay-per-view was a hell of a sell, right? Like I wasn't even, I wasn't even booked for that pay-per-view, right? I was, I was there Friday because we did the El Gran Gordo thing. And then I stayed through the weekend because I was booked for Monday. And we have the TR app, like an app, you know, in-house app that has a calendar. And each day, you're, if you have an event, it has a dot on the calendar. And I didn't have a dot for that pay-per-view. So I'm actually, I'm in Florida. I'm going golf. Like, I'm driving <laughs> to golf. <laughs> yeah. It's Love 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and I get a text from travel. Like, hey, they need you at the arena. I'm like, it's one o'clock. We're talking about call times two. Like I'm on my way to the golf course. What do you mean they need me? At the arena? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, they need you at the arena. I'm like, all right. Well, I, you know, I don't have any of my stuff or whatever. Like, I'm probably not going to make call time. Like, all right, we'll just get there when you can. You know. So I got there at like three and uh, probably didn't find out what was happening until like four thirty or five. And I think the pay per view went live at seven. So didn't have time to discuss it really. Right. It was just like right. I, I had a promo that they gave me afterwards too. So it was just, yeah, I remember that, man, it was looking back on it. I, I suspect that it was like in part designed to, for me to just like do it without asking the questions that I probably should have asked. I mean, that's really my one regret with WWE. Like I wouldn't really change anything else except I wish I just like, I wish I just wouldn't have turned on it. I wish I wouldn't have done that because it was just, it didn't, it was stupid. It made no sense. We didn't do anything like we didn't do anything afterwards. I didn't do anything really afterwards. There was no plan after going, going forward yeah. from it. Like it made no sense except they just wanted to take the briefcase off of him. So it was just like total collateral damage situation. And, you know, I wish I would just, I wish I would have told them no, but I didn't. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but, and, and, I mean, in all truthfulness, like uh, things hadn't hadn't been that positive, you know. At least for me, from like the time Otis really won the Money in the Bank briefcase, yeah. it was pretty obvious that like they they really liked him, and they you know were I didn't you know they weren't really letting me know how they felt about me, but obviously they you know weren't that high on me because of the way that things went down. Uh, so. Uh, you know, that's, it's, it was, it was tough because like I said, I love, Otis. I mean, this is like, I love Nico. That's my friend. Like uh, that's my brother and yeah. it's his dream to be in WWE more than it was my dream. Right. And so like, I can't ruin that for him. Right. It's like, yeah, I want heavy machinery to stay together, but I also don't want to deprive somebody who I, who I genuinely love of like the opportunity to be as successful as they can be, right? Like I, I don't I have to live with taking that away from my friend. I can't be that person, you know. It's not like yeah, that's just not who I am. So, uh, you know that that was that was also a piece of it for me. Was just like, well, I'll just take my medicine here, you know, because and and what happens happens. And if I can make something work for myself, then I'll make it work. And if I can't, then you know I have other avenues, right? Like. Right. As much as I don't really want to do it, like I can, I can go explain numbers to people and make good money doing it because I'm not, you know, because I can't, like, because I have exactly. that talent, and that ability. So, uh, you know, having that kind of in the back of my mind, I guess, freed me up to at least understand that, you know, it was more important to me to, you know, make sure that 
I didn't hurt someone, someone's potentially hurt someone's career by pushing too hard than, you know, to, like I said, really, really kind of steer into that and, and try to make more happen. You know, it's, it was, uh, it was complex. It was difficult. And, uh, you know, like I said before, kind of, I wasn't always in the best place mentally and right. these last four months that I've gotten to spend with my family and, and just kind of take care of my body and my mind have been super important. And I'm feeling, you know, as good as I have in the file. So I, you know, things happen the way they happen. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a journey guy. I'm a, yeah. I have a growth mindset. You know, I, I think success and failure is just the way you measure your process, not the way that you should be feeling good or bad about yourself. You should have your ego attached to your process, not have your ego attached to, you know, successes and failures. Like I said, those should be the way that you kind of test how you go about living your life on a daily basis. At least that's my uh, approach. I love that. I really do. And I love the selflessness really. And just your total outlook on the, the whole Otis uh, splitting up situation. Rewind, recap, relive. For over 50 episodes, the revolutionary force in wrestling interviews.